Welcome to today's 3D print. I am going to be upgrading my ANA E10 today. Uh, well, I guess one upgrade and three changes to um, get rid of all the noise, because the printer is ridiculously silent. I mean, I've never had a printer this quiet, ever. And when I say quiet, I mean the printer itself, the steppers. They're... I don't know what they did. People tell me they're all the same. They're not. Listen to this. Forget about the fan noise, um, just the steppers. And the CR-10 is equally, if not more, loud than that. And, the, and I consider those steppers to be quiet. Wait until you hear this thing go. It's, it's silent. I mean, I could sleep in the same room as this thing. It's that quiet. The fans, on the other hand, are like freaking turbines. <laughs> They're nuts. So, basically, you just need three of these. These are... Uh, noise blocker NB black silent fan um, these are 40 by 40 by 10s I'm also using a 40 by 40 by 20 not because you need that but because it's what I got I didn't have three 40 by 40 by 10s I had one, two 40 40 10s and one 40 40 20 so I'm using this one for the exhaust fan for the control, the brain box and uh, but you should be able to use you might want to get this one anyway because it comes with a disconnectable power cord and it also comes with a, a rubber skin to go between the brain box and the fan so that the fan doesn't transfer vibration noises to the brain box. Um, you don't have to, but you can. Uh, the fans are all held in by nut and bolt, so you can reuse all those nut and bolts for the new fans, or the 404020 comes with replacement nut and bolts. And um, I also like the removable cord. Uh, one thing that I do like to do is that these fans come with these wires that have the shroud around them, the, the nylon weave. Well, this is retractable. It's like springy. Okay, so I reuse that weave to cover the wires. It makes it neater and protects the uh, electrical connections so they don't short on anything or tangle with anything. Uh, let's see what else. That's it. Let's go into the printer itself. This here is a new hot end design by CNC Kitchen. I saw it, fell in love with it, and said that's it. That's what I'm using for my printer. I'm going to get you some light here. That might be too much light. There we go. So you can see better nozzle design underneath there. Fan bolts right on the outside. It bolts right onto the printer here. And then your stock um, part cooler fan sits on that side, screws right in, the threads right into the plastic. I fight a little bit to thread it into the plastic, but it threads right in. But not only does this give better airflow for the part cooling fan, um, cleaner airflow, bigger opening, but also it directs it exactly where it needs to go on the part and not your nozzle. As you can see under here, let's get you an angle here. There you go. See that little lip right there on the right hand side there? That puts the air where it's supposed to go and not where it doesn't need to go. And that fan is also a lot quieter now, by the way. I, a matter of fact, I don't even think I need to replace that. It's that quiet. Um, then I put my noise blocker 40 by 40 by 10 fan right on the outside. Done. Prints great. It also has a shell. I don't know if you can see that. There's a shell under there. There it is. So that the heat block is separated aerodynamically from the the cold end, the past the heat break, so that this 40 millimeter fan here is not cooling down your nozzle anymore. Now you can reach 260 degrees and you get there faster too. All right, let's go in here. There is the 40 by 40 by 20 in the back there and you can see the rubber boot around it. I might actually have that a little too tight, but it's fine. Now this one's a pain in the butt. They mounted this fan Am I seeing that? There it is. They mounted this fan just like they do on the CR-10, but unlike the CR-10, that bracket is welded to the frame. So you have to, getting it off is easy, you got to stick a wrench into those two screws down there, right down there, loosen them, and then you can spin the nuts off. Putting the new one on, have fun, it's a bitch. <laughs> you got to spin it on by hand, and then very carefully, little by little, tweak, tweak, tweak until it's tight. It's a pain. Um, I guess you don't really need to go in here and replace fans very often, so they don't have to change it. But it was nice on the CR-10 where I can undo this entire bracket and take it out and mess with the fan that way. Otherwise, this is um, virtually identical 
in layout um, to the CR-10. One fan in the back, one fan up here blowing over the parts. And, um, uh, but no fan inside the power supply. Um, so I've got, I've got like four or five hundred hours on this printer already, so I don't think it needs it, but I may throw a fan in there eventually just for shiggles, why not? Um, these fans are also wired nicely. They all go directly to the power supply, both of them. So these fans are not temperature controlled. They have no control whatsoever. They turn on full power as soon as you turn the machine on. As you can see, that wire here, this wire here, these two wires right here. I'm being very sloppy with this video, so bear with me. Um, these two wires right here. This is the fan for here. This is the fan for here. And they both run directly to a 12-volt connection on the power supply. So they are not temperature or variable control. They are full power, turn on. So this will explain a lot of where that noise is coming from, but now it'll be a whole hell of a lot quieter. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, otherwise, I like the brain box in here. It's not bad. They have a basic stop to keep the wires from being tugged out of the box through the grommet. Um, even though these are all exposed, they are well um, soldered. You know, it's not garbage. I mean, if I did this myself, I'd be okay with it. I would like to see them have connectors and be spaded. For This is a better connection, but it's more exposed. And I would like to have seen um, at least insulation, you know, cover the connections, you know, solder them lengthwise and have um, shrink wrap go over the spades so that they're not, so they're electrically isolated, but it's not a big deal. Um, it is neat. The ribbon, excess ribbon cables bundled up. The wires all routed relatively neatly. I mean, they didn't do a horrible job in the brain box. I'll give them credit. It's not bad. Um, I do have a MOSFET, which I may or may not install. We shall see. Um, I don't know if it actually needs it. I mean, the, the MOSFET that's built into this might be enough. I mean, it's not that big a bed. It's only 220 by 270. So, we'll see. Uh, oh, I do also wish to... Oh, yeah, definitely. It's just a plastic button. I'm going to cut down that reset button so that's flush and so I don't accidentally hit it. I did that twice already. That's a pain in the ass. Here's the fans that came with the printer. You can see they're identical. It's just three ANET branded 40 um, millimeter by 40 millimeter by 10 millimeter fans. So... 30 bucks, you can replace all three fans on this machine and make it damn near silent. So, actually, what the hell? Let's boot it up while it's open so you can really see how quiet this thing's going to be. What do you hear? Let me put the microphone inside the box. Blow in the correct way, blow in the correct way. What do you hear? How about the park link fan? You're touching it now. You know what I hear? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it is 100% silent. Now, there is a ton of room in here. These fans are um, slower. They don't blow as hard. Although those ANET fans really didn't blow much air. This is, this is blowing about as much air out the back as the ANET fan did. So these are probably pretty equivalent to the ANET fan, but just for my own peace of mind, what I think I'm going to do is put a, if there's enough room in here, mm, there might not be, I gotta see how much room is in here. How deep does that go in? Um, let's see, it's that deep. Okay, it goes all the way to that fan. So I cannot put a bigger fan in there. So what I might do is use one screw on each and put two 40 millimeter fans in here. So one attached to this screw hole, one attached to this screw hole, and just crank them down with some rubber grommets. So I can have two 40 millimeter fans in here. And then I think I just might toss a fan in here. Um, this looks like it's big enough to hold a 40 millimeter fan. Oh yeah. So I just might, maybe, um, I'll let you guys help me with that. What part in here is the part that gets hot? Is it the coil, the transformer? I'm assuming the transformer is what gets hot, and that's what I'm going to want to cool down. So I might just slap a... There's plenty of thickness in here to literally bolt a 10 millimeter fan to the inside of this cage and um, to have it blow air over this entire power supply. 
Um, I don't know if it needs it. It might not need it. It's only drawing 200 watts um, at full tilt. So it might not need a damn thing. But yeah, this thing is now absolutely silent. No noise whatsoever. The only noise this machine will make in any way, shape, or form is those steppers. And they are very, very quiet. This is cool. I'm going to put this back together and add more to the end of the video. I'm going to wait until that nose cone is done so I can turn that printer off and turn that fan off so you can hear nothing but this printer going. It might be a separate video tomorrow since that's got about four and a half hours left to print and I'll be in bed by then. So um, probably tomorrow. But I'll post this video tonight. You'll, you'll be watching it tonight so you'll know that. Um, yeah. If anybody got one of these to review from GearFest and you don't like it, I am putting up a bounty. I'll give you a hundred bucks plus reasonable shipping. Or if you're close enough, I'll come get it. And I'll take your E10 off your hands. I like this machine. Do I like it better than my two CR10s? Not on your life. <laughs> the CR10 whoops the shit out of this machine. Excuse my language. But um, the CR10 is amazing. The CR10 is a, a marvel of engineering as far as I'm concerned. So I mean... 500 bucks for a printer that does what it does as well as it does and as quiet as it does I've already replaced all the fans in the CR10 so it's quiet now too but its steppers are loud enough that I would not want to sleep in the same room as it I mean it's not obnoxious loud like the turbine fans that are on both of these printers um, but um, it's loud enough that I would not want to be in the same room this, I could sleep with this um, and of course the wand house noise sorry about that, I turned the camera and squeezed the button when I did that <laughs> <laughs> um, so standing offer if anybody wants to sell me their A9E10 I'll give you a hundred bucks plus reasonable shipping for you to send it to me and I'll take it off your hands because I, I like these printers I would I would not be against having a little desk full of these things because it actually is not CR10 competition this printer is going up against the Monoprice Maker Select Wanhao Duplicator i3 that is what I would compare this printer to because it's the same footprint and about the same price um, this printer from here to here is 40, centi 40 centimeters I think yeah 40 centimeters and the Maker Select is 40.5 centimeters so they are the same size the Maker Select is a wet noodle without about 50 bucks in upgrades to give you frame bracing this thing here is solid the whole damn table moves and this doesn't move at all it's it's crazy crazy solid um, adjusting it's easy um, it's it's nice I like it so um, if you want to sell me yours I'll take it and I will post more videos so far this is working well um, I have no issues it's silent it's it looks nice it's lower profile it's not as big and bulky I can see under the nozzle a whole lot better um, so this is by CNC Kitchen. So check out CNC Kitchen's E10 video, and he has a link on Thingiverse, I think it is, to download the STL file. So you can I just print it with PLA, no problem. I mean, there's enough airflow that it never gets hot, and it does not melt. But um, this is nice. I like it. Um, it. Installing is a bit finicky to get this in there, and make sure you double check afterwards because the thermistor pops out. So you'll have to go in there and push that thermistor back in that hole. Um, eventually I'm going to put a piece of um, cork on there, not cork, um, insulation with a screw in the hole there that's missing because they apparently decided not to include it to hold that thermistor in place. So I'm going to get put a screw in there for that, but otherwise, fantastic. Um, the bed holds a pretty good level, haven't had a problem with the level. I have my Print and Z surface on here and it works fantastically. The... Um, uh, once I get a piece of glass for this, maybe tomorrow, because I have to go get a mirror plate and then cut it myself since this size is unusual. I haven't found anybody who has a 220 by 270 piece of glass yet. Once I have the glass on here, um, this is not actually stuck down. I only peeled the corners and I have some clips holding it in place. Um, once I have the glass down, I'll get rid of the clips altogether. What I'll do is I'll put a piece of 3M tape here in the center and here just to hold the glass in place. And the glass will be rigid enough that not being fully adhered down won't cause me any warping problems because the glass itself will prevent the warping and then this will be fully adhered to the glass this way I don't need binder clips because the binder clips keep getting in the way 
Um, I tend to print full plate stuff. One of the things I like about this printer is the 270 millimeter um, depth of the Y axis and the 300 millimeter height, which dramatically increases the number of things I can print. The 220 by 270 also means even small stuff I print is dramatically improved. As you can see here, I do a lot of sequential printing. So there's a print, let's see where they all go. You have one here, 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 and here. So I do a lot of sequential printing where it does not print layer, 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 layer. It prints the entire part, moves over here, prints the entire part, moves over here, prints the entire part. This way you don't lose integrity from the nozzle moving back and forth between the layers. Simplify 3D makes that so easy. And this 270 allows me to do that. My monoprice here can only print one nose cone. Maybe two. If I do one on this corner and one on that corner, I can maybe get away with two nose cones. Well, this bad boy can do three. I can do one here, one here, and one back here. So I can have three nose cones going. I can do an 18 hour job and just let this thing run for a day, and I'll have three nose cones, and they come out looking very nice. They come out looking, I would say the print quality is virtually identical to the um, the Wanhao Duplicator i3. It's identical finish. I mean, it's virtually perfect. Um, minor zipper, very, very minor. You can't even really barely feel it or see it. Um, enough that I'm not worried about it. I'll leave it alone. No layer adhesion problems. No strength problems. I mean, good part. This is all hollow. Three perimeters with infill here at the bottom just to give it integrity and strength and infill up top here to give integrity to the cone, the top, so that I don't have any holes. Um, but this is going to be a parts machine for me. This thing's just going to crank out parts. And that's it. I will also make available my Simplify 3D settings. Um, it's not that weird. It's just normal settings I use for every single printer. The only thing I really change is retraction, um, extrusion, multiplier. I run this at 0.93 to 0.96 depending on what I'm printing. Um, that's it. More to come later. Another thing I would do, quick update, is um, these rubber feet are just self-stick. I'm going to replace them with felt pads later um, just because the felt pads um, slide a little better. They don't tend to um, jump and grab, but um, they peel right off. You take a knife, put them underneath there, and you can, you can wrench it off. Move them to the outside edge. That's so that it doesn't, it doesn't, it never tips over, but it rocks with a heavy roll of filament on there. Do that, and it won't do that anymore. 40 by 40 by 20 fan. These bolts actually go in too far, and they hit the fan, so you can't tighten them down on the way. But that's okay. Go into your spare parts bag and grab two of these panhead, I'm guessing they're M5s, um, screws out of your bag, and use them instead. And they fit perfectly. So you can just replace the two cap screws back into the spare parts bag and use two of these instead, and you're taken care of. I am also going to redesign the spool holder, um, not to change the design, just to make it longer. I'd like this to be about a half inch, three quarters of an inch longer, because I have a couple rolls that just barely fit on there. And I have this you know, as short as I can, as long as I can. So I'd like to make this a little bigger. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. I'm totally happy with the printed spool holder. It works fine for me. But I'm going to print this a little longer. Go in Tinkercad. I'm just going to stretch this part and make it bigger. Basically, take two of them, put them together, merge them together, and have it be a little longer. And then group them together and make a new solid one. It's about an inch longer. This way I'll have a bigger spool. Uh, that's it. I will post an updated video when I have a quiet room to... Um, turn this well it's on right now and you're not going to hear a damn thing <laughs> it is completely silent i mean i can put my ear directly on top of this box and it is silent very blissful i love it